Hi, this video tries to explain a fundamental change in UNESCO's budget methodology that the upcoming executive board will discuss in this document, 200EX5, part three, section F on cost recovery. Let me try to explain that to you. UNESCO's income is spent on two things, on activities and general services services we also call that overhead costs corporate costs or administrative costs central costs etc the change is about how these things will be budgeted in the future and in particular these general services what is this change about first we have to explain where unesco gets its money from the first source of income is the regular budget. That's the mandatory contributions that member states pay to UNESCO. The second source of income is the voluntary budget that comes from money from member states who ask UNESCO to do extra activities. The third source of income is the revenue generating fund that gets money from publications that UNESCO sells or from uh, room rentals, uh, etc. These two are called the extra budgetary budget versus the regular budget. Now, each of these three sources of income contribute to paying the general services, but in different ways. The regular budget directly pays a part to these general services like the legal advisor, the Bureau of Financial Management, the Bureau of Strategic Planning, uh, the Human Resources Department or the Internal Oversight Services who makes evaluations and performs audits, for example. The rest goes to programs. The voluntary part of the contributions also contributes to general services, but in an indirect way. UNESCO asks member states to pay a little percentage extra puts it in a fund called FITOCA, FITOCA, which stands for Funds and Trusts Overhead Costs Account. This fund pays for some extra people who help out these people who work in the general services to do the extra work that they have to do because it's generated by the extra projects that UNESCO is asked to, is asked to perform by member states. The third fund, the revenue generating fund, also pays for some extra uh, general services. But in a different way, it allocates a part of, its, uh, of it directly to the salary of one or two people who help out the people in the financial department. So we have three sources of income who contribute to general services in three different ways. That has three disadvantages. First of all, it's unclear because it supposes that these people who work in the general services, that it's possible to link their time directly to either regular projects or voluntary projects. That is really difficult. It's impossible basically because, for example, if iOS makes an evaluation of the World Heritage Program, that evaluation serves both the regular program activities and the voluntary activities that are uh, performed in the framework of that program. So it's unclear. The second disadvantage is that it's costly because if you have to figure out how all these different people contribute to all these different activities, paid by regular program and voluntary pro program that takes a lot of time because they have to do administration to make that possible bfm has to make different cal calculations etc and all that time that is spent on this administration cannot be spent on program delivery and that is what we want unesco to do so this is an, a disadvantage this the third disadvantage is that it's unequal because the result of these historically grown uh, allocation methods is that the regular budget ends up paying more for the general services than the extra budgetary budget. 
proportionally speaking. That means that if a member state ask, asks UNESCO to perform a big extra project, a part of the extra general services work will be paid indeed by the Fitoka fund and will be done by these extra people. But another part will also be done by these people who work in the general services and who are paid by the regular budget. So one member state asks for more work, but all other member states will have to pay the extra work that it causes through their regular contributions. So that is unequal. Now UNESCO proposes to change this via two principles. The first principle is cost classification. What UNESCO proposes is to draw a line to clearly separate on the one hand the management costs from the program costs. The difference is that program costs can be linked directly to program delivery, to results, whereas management costs are cross-cutting, namely they serve the organization as a whole, as I just explained for the iOS. Like Bureau of Financial Management, they do the financial management, which is beneficial for the whole organization, not for a specific regular project or for a specific uh, voluntary program in particular. Now, the revolutionary aspect of this is that it doesn't try to finance specific people depending on whether they work for regular projects or for voluntary projects, which is difficult to figure out, as I just explained, but it finances functions or types of activity that take place in UNESCO. It doesn't consider in detail who exactly is paid by what budget, but it says in everything UNESCO does, there is this much done on programs, there's this much done on management, and there's this much done on what we call special costs. And these will have to be paid by UNESCO's budget. Now, these functions, they, they, they are related to both people and things like electricity, paper, and all the other things. Because to perform program activities, management activities, and some special activities, you also need electricity, you also need paper, you also need these extra things. So this is really about functions about aspects of UNESCO's work and not about specific people. That is very important to understand. Now, the second revolutionary principle UNESCO proposes is the principle of proportionality. Proportionality. This is about how this money, how this, these functions will be financed by the budget and in particular the management costs. Um, the idea is to finance these management costs not by three different sources of income, but by UNESCO's budget as a whole. And we call that the integrated budget framework. This integrated budget still is composed of the regular budget and of the extra budgetary budget, but they're no longer separated. They are considered one pot of money that will have to finance all UNESCO's management functions. And the idea is to do that in an equal way by allocating these management costs both to the regular budget and the extra budgetary budget according to their weight. So if the regular budget is, for example, 600 million over the biennium, and the extra budgetary budget, 400 million, then these management costs, 60% will have to be borne by the regular budget, and the rest, namely 40%, will have to be borne by the extra budgetary budget. So it simply says, 
all these costs support all of UNESCO's projects. So let's allocate them both to regular budget and to the extra budgetary budget in a transparent, simple, fair and proportional way according to their weight. Now I really hope that this video helps you to understand this document which is not complicated in itself but for me it was difficult to understand because it is revolutionary. But fortunately this video is totally free so you can replay it as many times as you want for free. So enjoy it and I wish all UNESCO delegations a fruitful debate about this item during the 200th session of the Executive Board. Thank you for your attention.